Hello and welcome to Deeply Rooted. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and I come here so that we can have conversations. Because the more I have conversations with people like you, the more I realize that we are spiritual beings longing to be living more in that spiritual space in a way that it fosters and nurtures better human experiences. So welcome to my podcast and I'm so glad you're here and let's get started. Arms wide open. The moment somebody says to me, this is very risky, is the moment it becomes attractive to me. Kate Capshaw. What does it mean to be living a life with arms wide open? Is there something you have been thinking about doing that is a bit risky? Think about it right now. Think about what it is and what good could come from taking the risk. Think about what you're seeing as obstacles. Are they obstacles that you really are able to get past? Now think about risks that you're not so sure you can get past the obstacles. Where are you at? in deciding to move forward, arms wide open, in making that decision to go for it. So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Today's idea from the book, The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker, 131 Ways to Spark Creativity, Find Inspiration, and Discover Joy in the Everyday. Look slowly. The artist Robert Irwin is surely the patron saint of noticing. As detailed in Lawrence Welsher's book, Seeing is Forgetting the Name of the Thing One Sees, Irwin's work focuses on the experience and context of seeing rather than on producing art projects allowing people to perceive their perceptions, as Weschler puts it. Irwin started out as a painter, but spent lots of time staring at his canvas, not painting anything at all. He obsessed over the details of the gallery spaces where his work was displayed. The angles, the floorboards, the light. He once spent eight months in Spain producing nothing. I found a certain strength in sustaining over a period of time my attention on a single point, Irwin told Welsher. After a while, it's like you peel back the layers of that issue and are able to get to a deeper reasoning of how and in what way this thing makes sense. Gradually, he transitioned to making work like acrylic discs that treated light as their medium. 
He made site independent, excuse me, site dependent work installations that transform the way we see a particular space. It's possible to borrow Irwin's practice and apply it on a more practical scale. Slow Art Day offers an example. This is an annual event held at multiple locations across the United States. Participants are invited to meet at a museum. SlowArtDay.com explains, You look at five works of art for ten minutes each, then meet together over lunch and talk about their experience. You don't have to wait for the next Slow Art Day to try this. It's fun, it's fun to spend such time with a work of art, but you can also look at five products at your local big box store for 10 minutes each. Simple as it sounds, it's pretty radical in a quiet way. A study by the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York concluded that its patrons spend a medium 17 seconds in front of any giving painting. Start with Slow Art Day's 10-minute benchmark. You'll get a glimpse of what drives Irwin's remarkable process. You'll see details you missed. You'll draw new conclusions and connections. And you'll reconsider first impressions. My thoughts on this are, how about if we even took this into the space of the people that we come in contact with? Now I know it would be slightly ridiculous and odd to look at someone for 10 minutes. But how about for one minute? Look slowly. Slow down the desire to jump to a conclusion. Finishing sentences. Letting our hearts really engage rather than popping in and out of discussions. I invite you to also take a look at Robert Irwin's work online. I want to introduce you to the Beloved Prayer. It's a three-part guided meditation composed by Arthur LeClaire for use in solitude or with a spiritual director or in a small prayer group. Here's how it goes. You sit relaxed and at ease. Have confidence that God's love will show itself in some way. For the first ten minutes, without fuss, say the following words slowly and fervently. Jesus, you are the beloved. Repeat the words as necessary. Fill your heart. Let your heart fill with nonverbal praise and thanksgiving. Let distractions float by, even when they press upon you. After a while, the distractions will seem less and less urgent as you let them go. Simply be with Jesus in this precious moment. Practice that today for 10 minutes, and I'll be back tomorrow to introduce you to part two, and part three will happen the following day.